There might be fewer players, but there's never a lack of exciting action. This is the statewide Idaho eight man prep cast with Brandon Bainey and Paul Kingsbury. That's right. It is the Idaho eight man prep cast on IdahoSports.com. Uh, running into the fourth quarter of the week. Uh, you're probably going to be listening to this on Friday morning slash afternoon because uh, we had some of the things going on this week. So welcome in. This is your breakdown each week of uh, Idaho eight man action in the uh, across the state of Idaho. Obviously, I'm Brandon Bainey. Usually Paul Kingsbury is riding shotgun, but uh, Paul's a busy guy. So let's welcome in pinch hitting for Paul this week. <laughs> Logan Green. Logan, what's up? Yeah, I feel kind of special that I was backstage and brought in. Like I'm, I'm, I'm special to some extent. So, uh, feeling fancy now. I wanted to build it up. You know, I wanted to have a little bit of a surprise. In That's there. right. And everybody is now disappointed that it's, it's just me. I'll tell you what, Paul has been. <laughs> Paul's been getting some good comments from the fans recently for some of his eight-man takes. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got, he's got some good stuff. And I, and, and I'm going to clear up one. Okay, okay, you guys always bash me for picking Glenn's Ferry. You say that I, Paul likes to say that, oh, Logan picked Glenn's Ferry to win it all. And I don't think, I, I never said that they were going to pass Raff River or Oakley. I just think they are considerably better than they have been in the past. That That's that's what I was saying. And I think they would surprise people out there hanging in games a little longer than they maybe traditionally have and that they have a good future lined up ahead of them. That's my take on Glens Ferry. And now they did. They played, I mean, what was the final score? Like 48 to 6, I think, last week against Raft River. But I mean, it's that's a tough Raft River team for anybody to stick around with. Um, and they hung around there for a little bit and, and uh, you know, a respectable loss, I would say. So, yeah. anyways, that that's my take on that. I'm not picking them to make the playoffs or to win the state championship, but I just think. Um, that they'll open more eyeballs this season and and be an improved team. Yeah, well, we talked about because uh, I remember the conversation I had with you because you had just gotten done broadcasting the eight man classic games all the way back in August, which seems like six years ago at this point. But uh, you you were talking about how uh, Lighthouse Christian had come into the season as kind of uh, the presumptuous third place team in that district. You know, they were coming off a semifinal appearance, and and you told me and you were very honest. You said, look. I don't think Lighthouse is quite where they were a year ago. I don't think they're as good as people think. And I think Glens Ferry is better than people think. And that, what I interpreted that right. I mean was you thought Glens Ferry would, would potentially finish in third place, which they can still do. Right. Yes. And because it's going to come down to those those two when they play, I think, for that for that third place spot. I mean, but I mean, last week Murtaugh really put it to Lighthouse. And what a crazy game. I'm I would love to know how long that game took. Uh, with that over 120 points scored in that one, man, I'm sure the, 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 the people sitting there that weren't the football fans were like, man, is, is this thing almost done? Uh, Cause that one, that probably went late into the night there. Yeah, it was a, it was a wild game. Uh, Lighthouse Christian scored 52 points. Well, Murtaugh scored 74. So yeah. And, and Murtaugh's four and two and probably right now looking like the third best team right uh, in that conference. So definitely. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that it's probably their spot. And I, I just think Glenn's Ferry is an improved team. The quarterback, look, he, he just looked good. He looked like that's where he was supposed to be. And if I remember, right, he's only a freshman and he's just going to get he's just going to get better. And so that was kind of my take on that. Just, yeah. just just need to clarify that. <laughs> right. No, I totally agree. It's not not uh, right for us to. And when I say yes, I mean, Paul, it's not it's not right yeah, for Paul to come that's on. That's right. That's yeah. right run run you through the mud like that that's so. right that's right all right well we kind of always start with the with the 1a d ones first and then we work our way down to the 1a d twos i mean there wasn't a ton to report on last week just in terms of the teams that are ranked in the top five continued to to show up and show out oakley had the week off prairie had a 60 to 40 win or 60 to 40 60 to 20 win over Kamii. raft river had a the 48 to 6 win over glens ferry uh Another top five team that's been in there the last couple of weeks, Lapway. They defeated Clearwater Valley 44 to 22. I think it's pretty clear now. Prairie and Lapway, definitely the two best teams in the White Pine League. And oh, by the way, they play each other this Friday. That's going to be a fantastic matchup. Uh, and then and then the other team that was playing in the top five, Logan, was the game you were at uh, in Arco as Butte County hosted yeah. 1A D2 Dietrich. And again, Butte County, to me, just continues to impress. 
They win 40 to eight. That's a four and one team. Their only loss so far this year is to Raft River, and they were pretty respectable in that game. Yeah, and and Paul and I went. Uh... We w- we went out to eat afterwards there in Arco at, at Tailgaters and talked to the, the coach there at Butte County for a while and uh, it was a game that they would like to have back that Raft River game I think they they thought they had it um, maybe just a couple slip ups there late in the game I think they even had the lead in the fourth quarter going into it um, and and I tell you Brandon they were they looked good they were big and they they just pushed Dietrich around. You know, that game was eight to six in the second quarter in favor of Dietrich. And then a couple of um, there were just a couple of freak plays. There was a punt return run back for a touchdown. And I, I think Dietrich fans would uh, argue that maybe there should have been a flag on. Um, uh, and there was it was funny. You should go back and watch the replay if you haven't or if you did watch it. Um, there it, it was a there were some. Interesting things. I don't think it really affected the outcome of the game in the end. I think Butte County was going to win no matter what. Uh, just, just some funny things to to look at. But their size, just they were way bigger than Dietrich. And, you know, Dietrich's known for being a, a fast team and quick. And they didn't let him get outside. They never let Jet Shaw get on on the out and get, get in open space. And that's what Dietrich wants to do is get him in open space. He can make moves with his legs. And he never had the chance. Uh, they just smothered him. And they were just fantastic, and that's not a team that I don't I think anybody wants to meet uh, come playoff time. And and I tell you, it's it's really looking like a four team race. I know Lapway is right there, and and they're ranked, and they played Oakley very well in that eight man classic. But I don't know if those four, uh, we'll, we'll say those five, it, those are going to be the four. Four of those five are going to be left on the final week on semifinal weekend. I don't know if anybody outside of that group is going to be able to challenge anybody inside of it. Okay. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, I feel like, uh, yeah, the top five's kind of been solidified at this point. And we talked about the, the big matchup this weekend. I think the, probably the best matchup in the state for one, a D one football certainly is that Prairie Lapway showdown. Yeah. And it, and the thing is with Lapway, I think they might have the best athlete of the five. And that makes them dangerous because you, you know, Oakley did beat them, but I tell Titus year out had a heck of a game when those two played and they gave them fits. And I know that Oakley does not want to see them again. They don't want to see him again specifically. And he's going to play out and he's going to ball out and he's got a chance to beat anybody when he's on the field. And so you have to watch out for Lapway and, and that, you know, that's a good rivalry between them and Prairie. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that one shakes out and see, you know, how close it is. I think people are very curious to see how close that game is and to see how, you know, how close are those two teams together to kind of gauge maybe what we're going to see in mid-November. Exactly. So I thought it would be fun on this edition of the eight man prep cast, Logan, to to kind of look at the brackets and start trying That's to right. project how we think things, you know, to me, once you get into October, brackets are fair game. You, you can start talking about potential teams and who's on the bubble. And that. I mean, I love brackets. They call me they call me brackets, Baney. That's how yeah. much I love brackets. <laughs> You're Joe Lenardi. Joe <laughs> Lenardi. Well, I mean, seriously, if you look at the calendar, I mean, to, you know, 14, 15, 16 days from today mm-hmm. that they're, they're going to be set. Yeah. Right. Two weeks and two days, we're going to have brackets in hand. So I don't, it's not too early. It's never, it wasn't too early a month ago, Brandon. It's, uh, it's totally mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. At the one, a D one level, the way it works is the five conference champs automatically get in four of those five receive first round buys. So some unlucky conference champ will have to play, in the first round, there's 12 teams total and the other. So the five conference champs and then the other seven spots are strictly at large, kind of a free for all. So here's the interesting thing. I tried to go to max preps to look at the ratings for these teams and they, they didn't have them. They said there's not enough data collected or something. I don't know. So max <laughs> preps didn't have any ratings available, but I think we can pretty closely speculate how it might go based upon that. So it's going to be kind of a blind exercise, but I think we'll get pretty close. Yeah, I think so. I think you can, uh, we're not just throwing darts at an empty dartboard. I think we've, we've, we're no, we're aiming well. 
Yes. Okay. So five district champs, right? We think certainly it, let's start just numerically yes. district, district one, right? Wallace and Lakeside. It's a two team district up there. They played two weeks ago. Lakeside yeah. won a crazy shootout, um, but Wallace was very competitive. They will play one more time. And if Lakeside wins that, then they obviously win the conference crown. If, if Wallace wins that, it probably comes down to a point differential type system. So. Yeah, and you look at it right now, both teams sitting at two and four on the season. Um, and, and you look at that, and that game was wild and crazy. And it was, I believe it was in Wallace. And so next year, our next game will be in Plummer. And so you, you think that maybe that goes advantage um, Lakeside. And interesting, last year, they played that game. The one in Wallace was a blizzard and they played in like eight inches of snow. And I'm still upset about it because I put up a picture of that game and Max Preps took it and they shared it on their page and uh, didn't give us credit. I mean, it came from Lakeside. Um, but uh, yeah, if you look back, it even made it to ESPN. So that Lakeside Wallace game was on Sports Center's Twitter and Instagram page. And they, while they were playing and, you know, it, it was it was almost knee deep snow and and I shared it on Twitter and some other person in Indiana shared it. And they all, they kept sharing the guy from Indiana and I'm like, give the Idaho people some credit here. Don't, yeah. don't let this guy from Indiana. Anyways. Um, I, you know, I, I think you maybe give the edge to Lakeside just cause it's at home, but at, I think it's a toss up, like you said, and, and maybe comes down to some sort of tiebreaker. So Wallace is a younger team. I think they're, they're a team to, to look out for in, in the future. Um, and, and Lakeside has the most dynamic player on the field in Vander Brown, who's right. such a great running back. Right. So, um, I do, I, I would project Lakeside there. And I think regardless of what happens, whoever wins district one is probably going to be the com conversation that has to play in the first round of the playoffs. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Whoever it is, I think they're on the road for sure. Yep. And then the white pine league, I think will come down to the winner of this, this matchup. Friday night, right? Prairie and Lapway. They are clearly the two best teams right now. Uh, even in the standings, when you look at it, they're the top two teams. They're, they're both undefeated in white pine play. Prairie is undefeated overall. Lapway's only loss came to Oakley way back in that eight man classic. Yeah. And Lapway, the, the next team knocking on the door there is Genesee, but Lapway already beat them by, you know, a couple of touchdowns. So I think they've separated themselves from Genesee there. Um, and, and Genesee, you know, they, they might end up with only two losses in conference. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's probably going to come down to that Lapway Prairie game this week to see who gets that top spot. Yeah. And right now I think I would lean towards Prairie just, just out of respect. Yeah. They've, they've done it more consistently. Lapway, you know, has spurts and it comes in waves and, and Prairie's just been very consistently, uh, a good solid program year in year out district three, you know, notice very quietly has gone five and one. It's been a while since they've been in any of the polls or anything like that, Logan. They're two yeah. and one in their conference. I think it's pretty clearly notices district to lose there in district three. Yeah. And I you know I've I've seen Wilder play and I think they're a good they're they're probably going to get that second spot. Um I don't think they're up to notices level yet. Um they really struggled in that game against Carey. Um but I mean who doesn't struggle against Carey but uh, I, I think notice has that, that spot. I think it'll come down and I believe they play on the last weekend of the year. They do. Uh, so it'll come, it'll come down to the last weekend between those two, I believe. Yes. But I, I, I think notice wins it. And I think Wilder finishes second. So in a kind of a weird schedule quirk, if you go to notices p schedule on idahosports.com, right, you can get the schedules of every team around the state. You're going to see two opponents listed for Friday, October 8th. They were supposed to play Greenleaf friends in a conference game. Well, Greenleaf had to forfeit that. So you'll see a two nothing win over Greenleaf. And since it was a conference game, it counts. Right. Last year in COVID, we would just cancel the game and say, yeah, sorry. But this year, since everybody's for the most part playing a full conference schedule, these conference games, they get forfeited, do count yeah. in the standings. So you'll see a two nothing win for notice over Greenleaf friends. And then they were also able to turn around and pick up a game because it was canceled. And they're actually going to play Hagerman this Friday. So you'll actually see two games, quote unquote, scheduled for the eighth and kind of a weird scheduling quirk for notice. Yeah, Battle of the Pirates, I guess, between Hagerman and and uh, Notice there. And and here's what almost happened. Just a quick aside: uh, Horseshoe Bend had their game canceled this week. Same deal. They were supposed to play Tri Valley, and Tri Valley forfeited. And so um, 
that could have been a great matchup, right? Notice against Horseshoe Bend. But by the time Horseshoe Bend had found out their game had been forfeited and canceled, uh, like just by a couple hours, I think, Notice had already scheduled this game with Hagerman. So, it's kind yeah, of and that, that would have been a rematch of a game we saw a couple weeks ago um, that was played in Notice. And Horseshoe Bend won that 28 to 22. And so, and I, and I think if I'm 30 Katie, to 26. 30 to 26. Okay. Close I'm thinking game. of something else, but I believe the quarterback notice was out for that game or he had just come back either way. I, I think, uh, I think notice would like another crack at them. And I think everybody would like to see, uh, that game played again. That was a great game. Yeah. And, and one more thing is I'm looking at the schedule for notice here on, on Idaho Their first three wins of the year were by the same score, 54 to 12. How weird is that? Try yeah, that council in Camas County. That takes skill. That's skill. <laughs> yeah, for sure. District four, uh, it's going to come down to to Oakley and Raft River, right? They play yeah. in the last week of the season. And I think whoever wins that is the number one seed heading into the playoffs, certainly. Uh, maybe Prairie. We'll see. But I, I think either way, you know, District four champ and Prairie are the one two going into the playoffs if Prairie defeats Lapway. Right, um, right. I and agree. Then, and then District Five and Six, I you know I still think it's Butte County's to lose. Grace is looking yeah. better recently, but I just don't know that they have enough. No, I think it's I think it's Butte County. I think, um, like I said, I think they they feel like if they got another shot at Raft River, that they could come away with that one. Um, and after seeing them play last week, I I tend to agree with them. They're big, they're fast, they they play well. Um, and I, I think it's going to be tough to to beat Butte County um, for Grace and Chalice. Yep. Okay, so we kind of think on, unofficially, we think our, our five district champs will be Lakeside, Prairie, Notice, flip a coin between Raft River, Oakley, and then Butte County. So let's talk about those seven at-large squads, okay? We think, I think it's pretty clear, whoever doesn't win between Raft River and Oakley gets the top at-large right. spot. Lapway probably gets the second at-large spot. Or, or right. Prairie, if Lapway defeats Prairie. Those two you can pretty much lock in. And from there is where it gets more interesting, right? There's, yeah. there's kind of the seven locks, and then what do we do with the other five spots? So what do you think? You know, I I, I like – I think I think Genesee has a good chance to pick one of those up. I agree. Uh, they play a tough schedule. Um, it, it's tough. Like I'm looking – like right now, if my eyes are not looking at you, it's I'm looking at my schedules here, and you know, like – you know, you see Murtaugh that probably going to slide into that third spot, but they they have some they have some big wins. They beat Hanson, uh, Chalice, and Lighthouse, um, but they have losses to Castleford and Oakley, which which are respectable losses. Um, so I think that, that that their losses, I think you see them probably squeeze in there to some. I don't know where, but I think you'll see Murtaugh uh, in there, and um, I think you probably see, like I said, Genesee. I mean, that's only two. <laughs> but you look around, I mean, I, you're probably going to, I think Wilder is going to win out except for their notice game. And so they're going to finish with only three losses, one in conference. So they'll probably slide in as well. Um, and then from there, I mean, it is up in the air. I look around at the schedules. I mean, you, you could make a case for, for grace making it in or potlatch cameo. And, and I think in the middle of conference play, like the bottom of, of district two, if you look at the bottom of their, that, that, Potlatch, Kamei, Clearwater Valley bunch. I think they there's a lot of games left to be played for them, and that you could see uh, one or all three of those somehow slide in. Because you look around, I don't think you're going to see uh, Rimrock or Idaho City there. Um, probably not Lighthouse or Glens Ferry. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of opportunity, um, and I think you're going to see some teams get in that that maybe have a sub 500 record. Yeah, you know, I've kind of said all season long, I thought that uh, districts two and four would sweep the at-large bids. I, I have to change that now because I, I think you're right. I think Wilder at this point has played themselves in. But I think the other six at-large bids could definitely come from yeah. districts two and four, certainly with Raft River and Murtaugh. And then, like we said, the other the other four spots could come from you know, I, I've talked about the White Pine League getting definitely four teams in, possibly five. I'll tell you who the real wild card is going to be. It's going to be the Kamei Cubs because their last three yeah. games, Logan, at Genesee, 
at home versus Potlatch and at Clearwater Valley. And those yeah. those four teams are all going to be fighting for those playoff spots, right? Yeah, and I think that it, you know Clearwater right now is kind of a little bit behind uh, with that one and four schedule. But I mean, you look who they've they've played this year. Like they they've, their losses came to Raft River and Prairie, but they did lose to Genesee, which is you know in that mix right now. But uh, they do have Troy, which they they should beat. Uh, but then, you know, their end of the schedule, they have Potlatch and Kamii. So I think that that whole group, they're just going to beat each other up and uh, we'll see where the chips fall. Um, but I, I think it's a very real possibility that Genesee, Potlatch, Kamii and Clearwater all get it. Um, and then you get wilder and then there's still two more slots. And so I, I think you probably you see you see uh, Wilder get one, like we said, and then Murtaugh. Um, and then it's possible that the winner of that Glens Ferry Lighthouse Christian game gets it or Grace. I think it's going to come down at the end. That final spot probably comes down to those three teams, uh, Glens Ferry Lighthouse and Grace. Yeah, that that final spot could could come down to Grace and or Lighthouse Glens Ferry and or fifth best team from the White Pine League, depending on how everything shakes out, right? Yeah, and if you look at Grace's schedule, they've lost to North Gym, which is very respectable, the team that you're very high on, um, Oakley, respectable, and then Raft River. And it was a 44-12 to 12 loss to Raft River, which, you know, against a Raft River, that's not bad, right? <laughs> right. Uh, you hung in there for a little bit. They beat Water Springs. They beat Rockland. Uh, they have Lighthouse, Chalice, and Butte County coming up. So I think I, you know, I'm going to say Grace probably ends up with one of those spots as well. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick it out and say Grace. Okay. Well, that if that Grace Lighthouse game probably is a kind of a de facto playoff game in a way, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I do. I agree. I think that uh, the winner of that probably gets it, but I, I still think, uh, I think Grace would win that game, and I think Grace still comes out and and lighthouse you know i did say that i didn't think that they were uh probably where they could be but i mean you look at who they've played they played kendrick butte county north gym raft river that was their first four i don't know if anybody has a tougher first four than that and they still have to play oakley like uh you, you look at it and that that grace and glens ferry game are going to be huge for lighthouse if they're able to come away with two wins there they might slide in yep I think the only other team that had a more difficult uh, stretch was was Clearwater Valley. Four of their right. first five, Raft River, Prairie, Genesee, Lapway. And, and because of that, because of the tough schedules, like I said, if CV wins out, wins these three games, they're into the playoffs easy. And I think they're a pretty dangerous team if they get some momentum going into the postseason. But yeah, they got to take their business, certainly. They've dug themselves quite a hole. So that's that's kind of the 1A D1 picture. I kind of I kind of like doing this little exercise. Let's let's move on to one AD two, where yeah. um, on the other side of the coin, if we re revisit the game that you called Logan uh, Butte County defeating Dietrich, coming into the season, you know, based upon what I had heard from coaches in the preseason and the preseason coaches poll, I have said all along that I thought Dietrich was the third best team in the conference. I thought Kerry was one and Castle Ford was two, and that's kind of bore out. As we've seen, Dietrich is now four and two on the season. Their two losses were to Castle Ford and Butte County. But you tell me, something just the magic just doesn't quite seem there like it was last yeah. year. Yeah, and I and I will admit that I'm a I like Dietrich. You know, I covered I saw him play a couple times last year, uh, including that state championship game, and I and they were they were very good. Um, and I was expecting a lot more out of them Friday night, and uh, they just. They were overwhelmed, I think is the word I would use, by Butte County. Uh, Butte was bigger than them. Um, I, I think that's where Dietrich is going to struggle is when they have to play big physical teams. They can outrun um, pretty much anybody, I think, if you got into a speed contest. But the bulk and size, I think, might be the the downfall of them. Um, and, you know, I still think, like you said, they're going to finish third, and they're still going to beat most of the people that come their way. I mean, there are only two losses so far to Castle Ford, who's a top five team, and then to Butte County, who's a top five team in the level above them. Um, so I still think they're a very good team, um, but probably not exactly where they were at last year. Yep, I completely agree. And and kind of the same story at the 1A D2 level, right? The, the teams that are 
in the top five, continue to win. Carey defeats Hanson 72 to 22. Castle Ford shuts out Camas County 38 to nothing. Kendrick shuts out Lakeside D1, D2 over D1, 66 <laughs> nothing. Horseshoe Ben beats Salmon River 66 to 8. North Gem gets a big win over Chalice 54 to nothing. Mullen St. Regis, who hasn't been in the top five since the preseason, only because it's really kind of a top six, if you ask me this year. Six really good, legitimate contending teams. Um, they won by forfeit over Kootenai 2 nothing. So, um, I, I think it's kind of established uh, to me. There's six really, really good teams. It's going to be fun to watch them duke it out. Yeah, I think that it's just loaded, and I think people are probably sleeping on Mullen uh, right now. Yeah. Uh, they last year they made the semifinals. They they beat Horseshoe Bend up there in the snow um, in that playoff game, and then they had to come down and play Dietrich, and Dietrich kind of ran them out of the building. Um, and I think if those two teams, exact two teams, played this year, I, I that would not happen. I think they've grown a lot since that game at Dietrich, and I think they learned a lot from it. And like you look at the game, they they smashed Clark Fork a couple weeks ago, right? And and then you know Clark Fork is playing well. They aren't they're four and one, um, and I I think Clark Fork um, is probably better than other people think, and I think that that translates into Mullen. And you just don't hear about them too much because they're playing a lot of Montana schools. Uh, they're kind of tucked away up there, um, but I really think that they're going to make some noise, um, probably surprise some people. And maybe also once again, I think probably make a run at the semifinals this year, like they did last year. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. So, uh, the, the nice thing about the one D two bracket, Logan, is that it's all predetermined, right? This is, right. uh, al along with five, a, the only one that still kind of predetermines the bracket doesn't use max preps or anything like that. So it's going to be a lot easier for us, I think, to, to speculate. But let, let's start with the five conference champs. I think it's pretty clear. Mullen St. Regis from District 1, Kendrick from District 2, Horseshoe Bend from District 3, Kerry and or Castle Ford from District 4. Depends on how that matchup goes next Friday, the 15th. And then from District 5 and 6, I think it's going to come down to North Gem and Rockland in that in that final matchup between those two and to me i think north gem is the more yeah. complete team right now yeah i think that this is probably the easier um, i mean 1a d1 there's still some questions out there but 1a d2 like you said i think it's it's i think it's pretty comfortable there still is um a scenario out there where dietrich can tie for that top spot right if if uh castle ford or you know if carrie beats castle ford and then dietrich goes and beats carry on the final weekend of the season you could have a three-team tie at the top so it's still possible uh, to see some magic out of dietrich i i don't think that that will happen but uh like you said that probably a de facto conference championship game next week uh, between carry and castleford i think we were going to try and be there i don't know if it's official yet but you know we, i think we were going to try and be there and carry for that carry castleford game um so just be on the lookout for that. But uh, that'll be a good one. I think that'll be the one that shakes it out. And I think, like you said, I think North Gym, I, they're really good. I think they, they're they quietly sneaking around as well. Nobody's um, paying much attention to them. And I, they probably should. I mean, they they gave Kerry the toughest time of anybody so far this year. That's right. And I think that says a lot. Yep, absolutely. So the way it works is uh, three teams get buys. The other eight will have to play in the opening round of the postseason. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excuse me, ten. So three get buys. The other ten have to play. And the teams that get buys this year, Logan, is predetermined, will be the champions from District 1, District 2, and District 3. So we think that's going to be Mullen St. Regis, Kedrick, and Horseshoe Bend getting buys into the quarterfinals, which is nice for those schools. Yeah, it's huge, I think, for Mullen and Kendrick that they get a home game. And so let's just, if we just look at Mullen, they would play the winner of the the first place District 4 versus second place uh, District 2. And so you look at that, like first place District 4, um, you have the potential to have Carey come to you right. um, instead of having to go to Carey. And so you make Carey make that long drive – because that's probably who's going to be in that 4A spot. And uh, that that's a tough draw um, <laughs> to play in the 
quarterfinals having to go up against Kerry, but that that's probably what's going to happen in the one A slot. And you know, maybe that game gets moved to the Kibbe Dome. You never know. Um, sometimes they're they're pretty good at uh, slotting games in there. But uh, you j- just looking at that potential matchup because the other um, second place district two would probably be Timberline at this point um, or Lewis County. Those to see how that one shakes up. But uh, I, I'm guessing that that quarterfinal game will be um, Carrie and Mullen. And uh, Mullen will appreciate having home field for that one. Now, see, I think I'm reading it the opposite way, Logan. I think Mullen St. Regis has to travel for that because it's because the bracket I'm oh, looking at on the says, road. It's see, see the, the the bracket I'm looking at says the team on the top of the bracket will host. And oh, never mind. Just I, the bottom. OK, well, that makes sense. I mean, they get a buy. So then they have to go on the road. Yep. OK, well, um, that stinks for Mullen. They got to go to. Got to go to carry. Good luck. That's a bummer. That that really <laughs> sucks, unfortunately. So yeah, we uh, if if we work our way down the top of the bracket and in, in the first round, potentially you're looking at the very first matchup is the second place team from District Four against the third place team from District Five and Six. So I talked about on the on the uh, East Idaho Prep Cast this week about uh, water springs really digging themselves into a hole and and they have games against rockland and north gym still on the schedule and they need to win at least one of those two otherwise they're probably having to travel to castle ford so right now i i kind of project that as water springs at castle ford i don't think that ends well for water springs personally yeah because that's well, am i looking i must maybe i'm looking at the wrong way so that you're talking about at the top of the bracket this uh second place team from district four hosts the hosts. third place team from five and six yeah yep so yes got, yes yeah. sorry i'm my eyes are tired yes i agree yeah so that that that's a tough draw for water springs that's that's kind of how i'm projecting that right below that you have the second place team from five and six hosting the third place team from district three which is probably going to be dietrich right at this point uh, or sorry, the third place team from District Three, which which we think is going to be either Council or Garden Valley. Those two teams actually play this Friday in a pretty important showdown. Yeah, and we mentioned this on the the Treasure Valley Prep Cast, but that's probably uh, a game this week between Garden Valley and Council that decides who gets a home game, right? Who gets yes. that third slot, or who gets the second slot? So the second team is going to get a home team game. And the third place team will go on the road. So whoever wins this weekend probably gets that second spot and the third place goes on the road. I think right now I would lean council in that match. Uh, yeah, I would too. I think council probably wins that game. And so uh they'll be rewarded with the home game. And so, so here that would put you know, that would put Garden Valley playing at the second place team. Um so I that's think- I think that's probably Rockland. Probably Rockland. I yeah, I, I agree with that. Yep. Yeah. And Rockland's a team likes to spread it out and pass it around. So we'll we'll see how Garden Valley could potentially handle that. So so again, yeah. we're kind of following this bracket uh on our website, IdahoSports.com. We have all of the state football brackets posted there. You can follow along with us as you're listening. I should have had this loaded up ahead of time, but I didn't. So <laughs> uh because we're in the fourth quarter of the week and running out of time to do this. So so, so again, the first round matchups we're kind of projecting right now, Water Springs at Castle Ford. Uh, we've got Garden Valley potentially at Rockland. Then the next matchup would be the champion from District 4. We talked about this already. Carrie, uh, more than likely, hosting the second place team from District 2, which we think could be Timberline or Lewis County. Either way, should be it. Whether it's Castle Ford or Carrie in that spot should be an easy win there. And then at the yeah. bottom of the bracket, you've got the fourth place or the third place team from district four Dietrich hosting the second place team from district three, which is kind of interesting that a third place team would host a second place team, but that's yeah. the way the bracket looks right. Yeah. I mean, if you're Dietrich, you got to look at this and say, Hey, that's not a bad path. If we do finish in third, if you win that game, you get another home game and you most, you know, you play the winner of um, what could potentially be, uh, probably North Gym, and then that fourth place team from District Four, uh, I mean, which would be, be, you know, Camas County and Camas. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're going to see whoever is in first. It's probably going to be North Gym. Um, 
And those two teams played two games last year, Dietrich and North Jim, and uh, just kind of went at it. Both times there were high scoring games that were close and North Jim probably gave outside of carry gave Dietrich the most trouble of anybody all season. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're talking about quarterfinal matchups and, and one quarterfinal is already set in stone, right? Kendrick will host Horseshoe Bend more than likely. Yeah. The, the ch- district two champ will host the district three champ in one quarterfinal. So you've got, if, if we're just kind of projecting here and again, it's early, but uh, you're looking at a quarterfinal round potentially of Horseshoe Bend at Kendrick, right? And then you would have probably Rockland at, I don't know, Rockland at Council, maybe. That would be an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, you would have Mullen St. Regis at Cary. Cary, yeah, that's brutal. And then, <laughs> and then and then you would have North Gem at Dietrich, right? Yeah. That's see, and this yeah. is this is kind of what bugs me about the predetermined bracketing is it's not you don't always get the four best teams into the semifinals, right? I agree. I mean, I'm we're seeing it right here. I mean, that for for Mullen, I would I mean if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Um, but to to get a buy and then your reward for going undefeated, let's say they win out, is uh, you get to go on the road and play at Cary. Like that's that's t- that's a tough pill to swallow. If I'm Mullen, we got to fix that. We got to get that fixed. That can't happen. I mean, that's uh, that, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, a- you you saw it in the state basketball tournament too. You saw. Uh, just matchups in the first round that should have been state championship matchups, you know, yeah. uh, it, you know, it happens. It's, uh, it's, it is one of the downfalls of the predetermined brackets. It's nice. Um, I, I think you get more, you're, you're going to get down to it. Like if you look back in one AD one, um, a team might get left out that thought they were supposed to be in, but you're looking at a, a two and six team, a three and, you know, three and five, four and four team that's arguing that they're better than another three and five team. And you know, that they're going to lose in the first round anyways. Um, but this you get, is that equitable? I guess. Is that the, um, is that the term that, that why is Dietrich going to play a semifinal, a quarterfinal game at home and not Mullen? I, I think that's, I think that's the question to answer. Of course, this is all hypothetical. There's plenty of time left in the season. Clark Fork right. might come out and beat Mullen and say, no, thanks. You go home, but right. you look at it and say, and that's another thing you look, there's only one slot for Clark Fork or Mullen. That's it. Yeah. One yep. spot. Um, but, but to have a team that'll come in with possibly three losses um, in Dietrich gets a home game versus on the road for uh, Mullen. And like I said, kind of a, kind of a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, and and potentially, again, potentially that, that's how I'm reading this bracket. Team in top bracket hosts, and that would be, yeah, the, potentially a third place team hosting a conference champ. That also just seems really weird to me, but uh, that is what it is. And I guess real quick on the district one thing, that's why I'm super excited next year that uh, Wallace and Lakeside petition down to play one AD two in football only. So now you're going to have a five team conference next year with yeah. With, and they with, should hopefully get some more bids out of that. And then uh, yeah. you'll see them be able to play a lot more conference games and kind of trying to fill the schedule with people here and there. Yeah. Cause what happens now is a lot of times they just play each other twice, right? Clark right. Ford plays Mullen twice. Mullen plays Kootenai twice. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice to have a five team conference. You can build the schedule into that and get more representation at state. So absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, th- this was kind of fun, Logan. You know, we kind of went a different route than we usually do. Usually just kind of, here's the scores, here's the matchups this week. Um, I liked this. I, I liked kind of looking at the bracket and trying, yeah. to, trying to sort through the mess. Now, again, how we said it's going to go down, there's probably going to be some changes to that. This is just kind of our best guesses right now. Yeah, right? yeah, and it's, it's no, we're just going off of what we know. We don't favor any team at all. Um, we're just going off of what we think. Um, and just what it looks like right now. And if we're wrong, I will, like we always say, I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to see somebody come out of the gates and win their next five games and go to the state championship and uh, somebody that we never even mentioned. So I hope that they do that and uh, prove us wrong. Absolutely. Well, we'll bring you back for your public lashing. If you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll be here. 
in a couple of weeks. All right. Well, before we get out of here, we do have to thank our sponsor here on the Idaho Eight Man Prep Cast, the Idaho Division of Public Health. Uh, let's hear from our sponsor real quick, and then we'll come back and wrap it up here on IdahoSports.com. It's time to start planning for back to school. That's why I got my kids vaccinated for COVID-19. Kids 12 and older can get vaccinated. The vaccines have been researched and tested. They're safe and they work. And I hope everyone will choose to get vaccinated too. All right. The uh, Idaho Division of Public Health, great sponsor here for the Idaho 8-Man PrepCast. Uh, sorry it was so late this week, folks. We had a cross-country meet. Uh, Paul and I were both broadcasting on Thursday. That kind of tied up our whole day, which is one of the days we usually record podcasts. So um, we appreciate you being flexible with us and, and, and listening to this on Friday on game day, Logan. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is. It's uh, tomorrow or I guess if you're listening to this, it's tonight. Game night is tonight. A lot of big matchups out there that'll be going on. Yes. And again, if you uh, want to stay up to date on everything that's going on, you can check out the Friday Night Flash on mm-hmm. IdahoSports.com, our live, in-time, uh, real-time updating scoreboard of games across the state. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, Logan, thanks for stepping in and, and pinch hitting for Paul this week. Appreciate yeah, no problem. Seemed a little busy. Happy to do it. And I know you were a perfect resource because you've done a lot of eight-man games for us on IdahoSports.com this year. So you're a great resource. Yeah, it's, it's always fun to do them. We've, I've done a couple so far this year, and I think two of my last three are going to be eight-man games, and uh, yeah, they're always fun to go to. And uh, some of the best people there, like at Butte County, we, we got the hot dogs and Gatorade delivered to us um, during halftime. That was awesome. Um, to be honest, you don't you don't get that at the bigger schools. Um, I'll just be honest. You don't. Uh, there there are some that do that, but you know, it, it. Like I know Coach Kirkland has emailed me and said, you know, don't you know, don't forget to tell us what you want when you come to carry, and uh, we'll get you set up. And it's just, uh, I look forward to those eight man games. Yeah, me too. The best burger I've had in a while actually was last year in Malta uh, at Rats River High. We were there to do a video broadcast of the semifinal game between Lighthouse Christian and Rats River, one of the few games we did on video. And uh, oh, yeah, those burgers, they brought them up at halftime <laughs> and, hot, and hot chocolate, too, because it was that it was that night where it was like the fluke snowstorms and rain yep. that came through East Idaho. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun. So. Eight man football is definitely the best and, and uh, the best fans as well. So thanks for uh, uh, checking out the eight man prep cast. You can get the audio of this uh, at our website, idahosports.com along with wherever you download your podcasts. You can also see the video version of this on the idahosports.com YouTube channel or Facebook page. So uh, until next week for Logan green, I'm Brandon Bainey. Thanks for tuning into the Idaho eight man prep cast brought to you by the Idaho division of public health on idahosports.com.